Hi, and welcome to Embedded Systems course, Prototyping with Arduino Uno. In this topic, you are going to learn how to work with analog input, you will understand the main difference between analog and digital signals, and the basic concept of analog to digital conversion or ADC. You will use the analog read function of the Arduino and the serial monitor of your Arduino IDE to display the data read from the analog input pins. And finally, you'll learn how to create a simple application that make use of a potentiometer and a light-dependent resistor or LDR to control the behavior of your output LEDs. So, let's begin. Aside from the 14 general purpose digital input and output pins or GPIO, Arduino Uno is also capable of reading up to six different analog signals. It is through these analog pins A0 to A5, but what's the difference? Why do you have to use analog pins in the first place? In our previous lecture, we learned how to use digital input pins using a tactile switch. And you see how easy and convenient it is to use push-button switches in your applications. But you have to understand, we live in an analog world where almost all things that you see, hear, taste, feel, and smell are analog and cannot be simply represented by just two states of either high or low like a switch. There are infinite colors that are even indiscernible to our eyes, infinite number of tones that we can hear, infinite number of smells that we can smell. So working with embedded systems project means dealing with both analog and digital signals. Our applications have to interact with the real analog world in some way. In Arduino, when we talk of analog signals, just think of them as voltage that is changing over time. To demonstrate how to work with analog signals in Arduino, you will be needing the following materials. A 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, a light-dependent resistor, also known as photoresistor, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, 4 pieces 220 ohm resistors, and 4 LEDs. Let us start with the potentiometer. Potentiometers may come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. They are used in many applications in your daily life. Very common example is the volume control of your car radio. Potentiometer is basically a manually adjustable variable resistor with three terminals, and this is its symbol. So how does it work? Both ends of the terminals are connected to a resistive element, and the middle terminal is connected to an adjustable wiper. A potentiometer can work as either a rheostat, just a variable resistor, or as a voltage divider. If you want to refresh your memory on voltage divider circuit, the series and parallel video link is provided in the description below. To use the potentiometer as a rheostat, only two pins are used, one outside pin and the center pin. The position of the wiper determines how much resistance the potentiometer is imposing to the circuit. To illustrate this, I'll use an LED and connect it to a 220 ohm current limiting resistor in series. And then, I'll connect the potentiometer to act as a variable resistor, also in series. And finally, I'll connect the center terminal of the potentiometer to the 5 volt supply of the Arduino board. and the ground to the negative terminal of the LED to complete the circuit. This is the equivalent circuit diagram for our connection. So by changing the wiper position, we can get the value from 0 ohm to 10 kilo ohm resistance. And in effect, the LED gets dimmer as the resistance gets higher. And the LED gets brighter as the resistance gets lower towards 0 ohm. However, to use the potentiometer as a voltage divider, all the three pins must be used. One of the outer pins is connected to the ground and the other to the positive 5 volt. The middle pin is the voltage output. When the potentiometer is used as a voltage divider, the wiper position determines the output voltage. This is the equivalent circuit diagram when you have the potentiometer connected this way. I'll use a voltmeter for you to see how this circuit divides the 5 volt supply depending on the value of the two resistances. 
As I change the wiper position, if I turn the knob towards the terminal connected to the ground, the output voltage decreases. And if I turn the wiper towards the fiber terminal, the output voltage also increases. So basically, the voltage divider is just a circuit used to turn a larger voltage, like this fiber supply, into smaller ones. Understanding this simple concept is very important for you to understand how Arduino boards read analog signals and then eventually interpret it in your code. This analog signal in a form of varying voltage level could be coming from different sensors and we'll talk about that further in the next few videos. And now, to read the varying output voltage of this voltage divider circuit in our Arduino analog input pins, all I have to do is to connect this output voltage to one of these analog input pins. I'll use A0 for this illustration. And then, in my sketch file, I'll declare an integer variable I'll call value. This variable will hold the value that the analog pin A0 reads from this voltage divider output voltage. In the setup function, I'll configure my serial monitor by typing serial.begin and set the data rate or baud rate in bits per second. This code opens the serial port. Inside the void loop, I'll use the value variable and assign the data being read from the analog pin A0 by using the analog read function. And then, I'll call the serial.print function to pass in a string literal value colon. This will be displayed in our serial monitor. Then adjacent to it, I'll be displaying the actual content of the value variable using the print line function. And that's it. Let's upload the code. And then in the tools menu, click the serial monitor. And from here, you'll see the continuous display of the value being read from the output of our voltage divider circuit. If I turn the wiper towards the ground terminal, the value decreases down to zero. And if I turn it towards to the positive 5 volt supply, the value increases up to 1023. Let me explain this one in a simpler way. Although there is a much more complex thing that is happening behind the scene, each of the analog input pin of the Arduino Uno is capable of reading analog signal in terms of volts and then converting it to an equivalent 10-bit digital signal. It simply says that each analog input pin has a 10-bit resolution ADC or analog to digital converter. So if we have to read a voltage from 0 to 5 volts in one of the Arduino Uno's analog input pins, it will be converted into a range of 10-bit binary numbers or 2 raised to 10 which is 1024 possible combinations. This gives us a range of binary numbers from 00, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 up to 11, 1111, Converting this to decimal number gives us an integer number ranging from 0 to 1023. So if we subdivide this to an actual voltage of 0 to 5 volts, we could say 5 volts divided by 1024 units, we will be getting 0 0.0049 volts or 4.9 millivolts per unit. It is like saying now that the analog reading of 0 volt is converted to 00 000 000 in binary, which is equal to integer value of 0. The analog reading of 0 0.0049 volts is converted to 00 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 001 in binary, which is equal to integer value of 1. And again, 0 0.0098 volts is converted to 00 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 in binary, which is equal to integer value of 2. 0 0.0147 volts is converted to 00 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 11 in binary, which is equal to integer value of 3, and so on and so forth. By adding 0 0.0049 volts per unit, starting from 0 volt, we will reach up to 5 volts converted to 11111111111, which is equal to an integer value of 1023. If we want to display the actual voltage level in our serial monitor 
instead of just the integer number from 0 to 1023, we can do some modification to our code and include some math computation. If we have range of integers from 0 to 1023, we want to map any value from this range to 0.0 volt to 5.0 volt, we can apply linear interpolation. I'll modify this print line function and on the same line, I'll put a space, I'll declare a float variable called voltage, and I'll include some basic computation, 5 times the integer value divided by 1023. This one is already the simplified formula based from the linear interpolation to get the equivalent voltage level. Then, I will print the actual voltage and put the string volts after the value and proceed to the next line. Let us try and upload the code. And as you can see, the serial monitor displays both the integer value and the actual voltage reading. Now, to demonstrate how we can make use of these analog readings and respond to it accordingly, let us use our previous example, a very simple blinking light. I'll connect four LEDs, each with current limiting resistor, to pins 10, 11, 12, and 13. I'll modify this code and make these four LEDs blink but then, as a tweak, I will adjust the delay of the blink depending on the value received by this analog pin A0. So, in the setup function, I'll configure pin 10, 11, 12, and 13 as output pins. I'll create another function called LED blink. I'll set all the LEDs to high and then call the delay function. But, as an argument, I'll simply pass the value read from the analog pin A0. This is the value ranging from 0 to 1023. Then, I'll set all the LEDs to low and call the delay function one more time. Finally, inside the void loop, I'll simply call the LED link function. Let's upload the code. And as you can see, if I turn the knob towards the positive 5 volts, it increases the delay and the LED blinks slowly. Turning it towards the ground decreases the delay and the LED blinks rapidly. If you already have a good programming background in C or Java, you can apply similar construct to simplify this blinking code. For example, I can declare boolean variable here called state and initialize it to high. Then I'll modify my led blink function by deleting this half of the code. I'll change the constant high with this state variable. And at the end of this function, I'll invert whatever state this variable currently has by using the logical operator not. And that's it. Let's upload the code again and test our prototype. You can even use a for loop in replacement to these similar lines of code. I'll delete these three similar lines, and using a for loop, I'll type for int i is equal to 10, i less than or equal to 13, and i++. plus plus. Then, I'll replace this numeric literal 10 with my local variable i, so that it changes from 10 up to 13. 
and applying the current state to each pin. Let's upload our sketch and try it one more time. And as you can see, the functionality remains the same. Understanding the core principle on how voltage divider works and how voltage is being read and interpreted by your analog input pins is very important if you want to incorporate different sensors in other analog components eventually. As an example, I'll use the same circuit connection and simply replace this potentiometer with two resistors to perform the same voltage divider circuit. So instead of having this connection, I'll use this a light-dependent resistor or LDR which has a varying resistance based on light intensity it receives. And a fixed 10 kilo ohm resistor. The LDR and this 10 kilo ohm resistor form a simple voltage divider or also known as potential divider circuit wherein the center point of this potential divider is fed to analog input pin of our Arduino. And as simple as this, we already have a light sensing adjustable delay blinking LEDs. As this LDR receives a lower light intensity, the resistance of the LDR increases. As this LDR resistance increases, relative to the other resistor, which has a fixed resistance of 10 kilo ohm, it causes the voltage drop across the LDR to also increase. And in effect, the voltage level at this stopping point, when measured with respect to the ground, decreases. This makes our delay function to respond faster. This is indicated in our code, and you can also validate it in our serial monitor. On the other hand, as this LDR receives higher light intensity, the resistance of the LDR decreases. As this LDR resistance decreases relative to this fixed 10 kilo ohm resistor, it causes the voltage drop across the LDR to also decrease. And in effect, the voltage level at this stopping point when measured with respect to the ground increases. You can validate it in our serial monitor as well. Thus, this makes our delay function to respond slower. And now, for our programming and circuit connection challenge, try to implement a circuit that consists of four output LEDs and two analog input components, a potentiometer and an LDR. The LED sequence will only be activated only when the LDR receives a lower light intensity and turns off when it receives a higher light intensity. Of course, this will vary depending on your room or environment's lighting condition you may want to adjust your if conditional statement appropriately. However, the LDR only triggers the on and off of the LED sequence. The speed of the sequence is controlled by the potentiometer. And that's it! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you feel you learned something of value here, please click the like and subscribe button for more programming and circuit tutorial. Once again, thank you very much and hope to see you in our next video lecture.